like to ask you a your advice about how to think about 3.11. Last year, this tsunami happened in um, tsunami part and Fukushima part because this Fukushima problem is not over yet. So how, to, how can I think of this compensation? I have had one very productive meeting with the Japanese government in Washington. You have an excellent, excellent Japanese ambassador in Washington and he invited me over and there were about 12 10 people from the Japanese government what should we do in compensating the victims of Fukushima the nuclear plant where people were either ordered to distance themselves from physical proximity from the plant or even if there was no government order felt they better leave anyway, that even though they were told that they would be safe, they didn't believe it. So they fled. And what I learned about Japan, and they're, they're trying to come up with a compensation program. The biggest hurdle that they tell me they're trying to deal with is the one that Neil raised twice during the last uh, hour and a half. Mr. Feinberg, our problem is not only how much we compensate people when they either relocated by government order or relocated voluntarily because of fear. The problem we have is, well, everybody else is saying in Japan, well, what about me? I, I, I'm far away from the nuclear plant, but the tsunami destroyed my house. Uh, the, the floods, uh, where's my compensation? Nuclear exposure is one form of damage. Those people should be paid. I'm worse off. I lost everything because of the tsunami. My whole village was destroyed. Why aren't I eligible? The Japanese government is, is at last, I, I have been, I had, uh, my meeting with them was about four, three, four months ago, but I think they're politically not at the tipping point where some people will be helped but not others and it's a problem. It's the same problem uh, a few years ago when I met with the Israeli government and they were thinking about a compensation program for those settlers in Gaza, Jewish settlers, who were going to be forcibly removed from Gaza and relocated. And the government said, we're going to set up a compensation program, Ken, like you did with 9-11, that Congress did. We will pay compensation to, um, for all of those Jewish settlers that the, Jewish, uh, the Israeli army is going to have to come in and forcibly pick them up and take them and relocate them. And I said, well, here's, here's how our program worked. Um, but let me ask you, uh, this was um, uh, Prime Minister Sharon's government. Is the Knesset on board? Well, we'll deal with the Knesset. <laughs> the program was a failure. It was a failure because there were an awful lot of Israelis furious at the idea of compensating their brethren in Gaza when they want to be relocated from the West Bank. Oh, we want a better apartment. Oh, we want to be moved. Why them? We didn't force them to live in Gaza. So if they're going to have to be, be uh, removed from Gaza, so, so, the tipping point is the political consensus. I write in the book, very important, that the, the Obama administration's learning now with the home mortgage foreclosure program. We're going to help this guy because his mortgage is underwater. Well, the next door neighbor's mortgage isn't underwater, and she's paying the same mortgage that she's always had to pay. And now here comes the federal government with a mortgage, a, a mortgagee underwater. We're going to make it easier for you. And don't you all worry in the community. A rising tide raises all ships. If we help her with her mortgage, everybody benefits in the community because there won't be a foreclosure. 
And you know what the people so far say in the community? Spare me. Spare me. You're going to improve the whole community by helping Mrs. Jones get out from under her mortgage? The tipping point is not reached. And that mortgage program is a real problem for the administration. Those are some examples. I started with Fukushima, and I ended up with a mortgage in Denver. Okay. <laughs>